Welcome to the Hound's Tales Podcast, your home for field trialing and deer dog hunting. Stories and discussions on the world of dog hunting. So drop the gate and cast your hounds for another episode of the Hound's Tales Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome to the Hounds Tales Podcast. Tonight, I have a special guest, uh, Chris Powell. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, buddy. Yourself? Uh, we hanging in there, man, hanging in there. Y'all uh, y'all just finished up uh, uh, quite, the, quite the week, didn't you? Yes, sir. We, we left from Supply, North Carolina, Thursday morning around 3 o'clock and made the trip to Grenada, Mississippi. It's about a 12 and a half hour drive, straight drive time. Time you get a few breaks, you're looking at 13, 14 hours. Mm. Mm. Sometimes it'd be 15, 16, depending on traffic. I mean, right. you gotta go through Atlanta and, yeah, you know, that old song, Highway 20 Ride. I understand <laughs> what that man means when you get on Highway 20 because you're on it forever. Yep, yep, yep. I about like, um, when I was in college, we used to the trip from Ohio down to uh, down to Florida. I think it's what seventy seven or seventy five. I can't remember what, what road it is, but you pretty much on one road all from from Ohio all the way down to Florida, and it is never ending. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, kind of introduce yourself. Let everybody know who you are, and uh, you know where you're from, and that, like you said, I think you already said that, but you know, just go ahead and give a little introduction of yourself. All right, it's Chris Powell. I've been fox hunting since 2000 and started 2004 um, from Supply, North Carolina. Gotcha. Just enjoy messing with hounds. Um, love a good looking combination all around hound. Right, right. I, I get to look at them every day. I get to run them once to twice a week. So, it, uh, good looking dogs a lot easier on the eye. But <laughs> if, he, if he runs right, I don't care what he looks That's like. That's right. That's right. That's right. We joke all the time that if he uh, if, if he's rainbow colored, I don't care as long as he'll go out there and win a trophy. That's fine with me. <laughs> I've had some ugly ones that were extremely nice dogs. Right. You look at them and go, boy. <laughs> I mean, you know they got to be good looking. Right. I mean, I mean you know they got to work good to be that ugly. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you said about what, what year did you say you all got into this? I started it in 2003 or four. Okay. So I've been hunting right at 20 years. Gotcha. Well, what what got you into the sport? Uh, you know, a lot of people kind of grow up around it, but you know, <laughs> that that's a funny story. Uh oh, Mister Ray Castine, he hears this or thinks about it, he'll get a good laugh. <laughs> I started out um, when I was sixteen years old. A buddy of mine invited me to go hunting. I was from the mountains, didn't know anything about hound hunting. Um, just we went out and hunted, and I fell in love with it. And through the hunting club, Lee Caps was moving, and he told me, he says, I got these three old dogs. He said, I'll give you. And um, I've, I've told him a few times, I don't know how many thousands of dollars he's caused me to spend by giving me them three old dogs. <laughs> um, it was two black and tan walkers and a blue tick. <sighs> <laughs> But he ended up giving me those dogs, and I started, I deer hunted them, I enjoyed them, and uh, went to a few deer trials, and of course, you know, the blue ticks and the walkers scored decent. Right. Well, I made the phone call, they told me about a place called Hallsboro, and they said they had a field trial the next day, and I called and got some um, numbers, and I didn't know anything about, you know, because I'd went to my buddy's house, he helped me paint the dog. Right. Well, when I went to go to the hunt at Hallsboro, I didn't know anything about Sherwin Williams paint. Right. I just went to Lowe's and bought some lacquer paint. <laughs> I, I think they scored 20, 25 points a piece and come up there and quit with no numbers on them. Everybody was <laughs> laughing about who brought the blue tick. And, uh, 
a couple guys come up to me and say, son, you want to do this? You need something that's got a little more horsepower than what you got. Right. And I went and bought my first Foxhound, and it was since from then, there. it's been history. Yeah, on I mean, from there. Yep. yep. Them old uh them old coon dogs, tree stock, whatever you want to call them old style dogs, it seems like those are the ones that get everybody into it. Yep. That's I I, got, I was into it the same way, you know, and and it's once I once I got the bug, it was an addiction, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean it just I don't I don't know what I would do if I didn't have hounds. I mean I tell you drugs might be a hell lot cheaper, I can tell you that. <laughs> i tell you i i would hate to know how much i could have probably paid my house off a couple of times in the amount of money i've spent on dogs over the last 20 to you know 20 years but when the good lord calls me home i've been here i've enjoyed what i've done the in god we trust on the end of all our dogs names i can't i've had countless people ask me what that means right and that's a testimony in itself yep yeah um, that's something so, i've always thought very highly of y'all that you know y'all y'all run that that cree at the end of all of them and it seems i think most of y'all's dogs y'all try to keep some kind of uh biblical name behind them correct we we try i mean it it's getting a little tougher now that right. I've been in it so long. You start running out of names or you hold certain special names for special dogs. Right, right. I've got a Google Drive of special names for special dogs. I'm waiting for them to <laughs> you just got to hit the right dog. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, man. Uh, well, like we kind of talked about at the beginning a little bit, uh, y'all just had a, a big week uh, coming back from the Chase for Charity and Nationals. Uh, why don't you give us a recap of how y'all's week went down there? Uh, well, we got up Saturday morning around 6 o'clock, 6.30. Went to the registration, drew our numbers, and um, started from there. Right. Luckily, we was able to have most of the dogs ready for numbers. Mm -hmm. You get down there, I think there was 14 different states and Canada represented at that hunt. That, that's awesome. They were, I think I think it was 353 for charity and 601 all age. That are for national dogs. Right, right, right. Um, it's all on the outside. Grenada is one of the premium grounds. I mean, the yeah. I mean it's unbelievable. If you've never been there, I would encourage everyone to find a hunt to go to. <clears throat> if three days are not your thing and you ain't able to take off and go to the um for a long time, I would encourage people to take off, say, a Thursday and Friday and go down to the Le Bonner hunt. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as one days, I don't think there's a one day in the country that is held that could compete to the Le Bonner. Um, I, I can't remember exactly how much they raised last year. I want to say it, it was $120,000, $130,000. I think that's right. I want to say it was like one hundred and twenty, one hundred twenty-three. dollars so It was a weird number, but you're right, right in the middle of the, between that one twenty, one thirty range. I mean, and the, the, as, <laughs> as fox hunters, we are close to, I think we've been down there the last five or six years in a row. We're close to have raising, or they may have broke it, one million dollars for the Labonner's Children Home. Mm. Mm. That's and incredible. I mean, you know, yeah. As fox hunters, I mean, some people just, you know, for us to come together as a group and raise that kind of money, the people that put the Labonner hunt on, I mean, I can't say enough good about them. Right. I mean, it's an extraordinary hunt. I've seen, you know, people, they have raffles that just, I mean, it's unbelievable what it goes for. And then there at the end, they'll do a free raffle. Right. You ain't raffle, you ain't bidding on anything, but people will bid up two, three, four, five hundred dollars just to give it as a donation. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. I know um, when I kind of started getting into the sport and following it and, uh, I had shared a picture and uh, a buddy of mine that I hadn't talked to in quite a while actually had hit me back, hit me up and it was like, man, I, he's like, I, I had no idea that this was even happening. He's like, my son goes to that hospital. My son is in that hospital all the time. 
And he's yeah. like, the fact that y'all do this for this hospital is amazing. And he's like, and I can't thank the, the hound hunting community. And he, it, it put a new respect for him on the hound hunting community and started asking questions and, and learning about it. So it was, you know, that kind of stuff right there. It just goes to show that, I mean, it, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're, you're, you're doing good work in the world and you're, you're putting a good name out there and showing people what houndsmen really are. Yeah. I mean, and, and houndsmen get a bad name because of one, you know, I don't care what profession you're in, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, whoever, they're good and bad in every profession. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they are good houndsmen. They're horrible houndsmen. Right. And unfortunately, the horrible houndsmen get it to the point where all houndsmen are judged under the same scrutiny. Right. Right. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's terrible, but that's just, that's the world we live in. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, well, keep on, keep on with your recap of, uh, of y'all's week. You know, I think the, y'all started the week off with the bench show, correct? Yeah. The bench show is held on Sunday. Um, we got down there, a lot of hounds shown. Um, right. It, they they do horn blowing contests during that time. They have all the meetings. Um, they introduce all the judges. It, it's almost like stepping back twenty years ago. I mean, it's a fun yeah. time. It's because I mean, you don't hear many people blow horns anymore. Um, I don't know that I've ever heard one blown. It's if you, uh, Polly Sutter from Kentucky is awesome. I mean, if if you don't follow her on Facebook, mm-hmm. she does a phenomenal job keeping up with stuff. <laughs> she posts videos of everything. I mean, you can sit there and watch videos of the bench show. You can watch videos of the horn blowing contest. Um, you said her name is Holly Sutter. Uh, Polly Sutter. Well, she just got married, so it might be Saturday now on Facebook. Gotcha. But um, she's from Kentucky. She does a phenomenal job. Um, if you once you friend her, you'll you'll see she'll put up. She'll go to the bench shows at most of the Kentucky hunts, and you'll see just about every dog. She's. I can't say enough good about her for the information she gets out there during the hunts. Right. Her and her husband John Saturday judge a lot and. It's just, she's one of my favorite fox hunters in the world. I mean, thank the world of her. Gotcha. But, um, it's kind of cool to sit there and like you're catching up dogs and you can listen and hear the, you know, the gentleman that can blow the horns, blow them, and you can sit there and hear them half a mile, mile away. Right. <laughs> I've know, always heard most- it's an incredible, just like you, like you're talking, like it's an old school feel. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. It's, I, I had one of mine I had to go in the woods after, and I'm sitting there and finally pick him up. And it was a young dog and got him, and I'm sitting there listening, walking out. And that horn, it just, it was unbelievable how you could hear it. And come to find out, the guy had one of my dogs in the box, and he was almost three quarters of a mile away from me, according to the Garmin. And I could, I mean, hear it clear as day. Wow. Wow, um, that's awesome. You got, I can't remember which – uh, it's one of the Detweiler brothers. I can't remember which one it is. He actually has a hollowed-out conch shell that he blows. And if you can find – if you friend request Miss Polly and you listen to – or the National um, Fox Hunter website may have the horn blowing contest on there also. Okay. But if you see or listen to – and I think there were five contestants this year – if you if you listen to them, all of them have their own rhythm, their own tone. I mean, the dogs that own you know, the dogs they own definitely know. Hey, that's Daddy calling, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> there's no no question about it. Right. Right. And I mean, yeah, I'm gonna have to look yeah. that up and see if I can find it. Maybe share it on the uh, maybe share it on the podcast page and see if I can yeah. you know share that around. But that's awesome. I I didn't even know they still did that down there. Yeah. I mean, you go out to Kentucky. uh, Yeah. I had a lot of people ask me, man, why do you, why don't you feel trial in Carolina as much? Mm -hmm. I enjoy going to Kentucky. 
I, this year I've been to Kentucky, Illinois. So you went to Alabama, Mississippi. It's just, yeah. it seems like you go go some of those places, you're stepping back in time. Right. I mean, and, and people tell me I'm crazy. Like, that. no, you're not. Well, I mean, you just, you got to go there and experience yourself. I mean, some of the best field trialing you see, and listen to some of these old timers up there talk. You get around the fire barrel, and it's just nice to sit back and listen to some of these guys. I mean, some legends. Yep. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind down there at the Nationals this year, you had Mr. George Hill. The Hills have won the Nationals for charity. I can't tell you how many times. He, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Right. You've got Randy Frazier that will be a Hall of Famer eventually. You've got – yeah, you know, unfortunately, Mr. Robbie Bogue just passed away two years ago. He was always at the Nationals. He's he's a Hall of Famer. It's just you sit back and listen to the wisdom that's around mm-hmm. you. I mean, that's that's what I like about that hunt. Yeah. I mean, for, you you go to a hunt. Most of your hunts, you might have two or three states. Right. But to say fourteen states and Canada, that's um, <laughs> that's incredible all in itself. <clears throat> Mr. Glenn Finch, I mean, he he's done <laughs> phenomenal work. He HGA two in the Nationals, right? You've got Kyle Ladner. I mean, he's a he's a staple in the liquor bread hounds out west. I mean, Kyle's PD and all those he's owned. I mean, you see some people. I mean, right? It, Just. I just can't explain it. You've got to experience. Yeah, and that's what I've always heard. Um, you know, a buddy of mine was talking about the All American. You know, and that's kind of the same way <clears throat> from yeah. last year. And he's like, man, he's like, even if you don't go down there and do anything in the field, on the, he's like, even if you go down there and completely skunk out the whole weekend, he's like, the experience of going down there and doing that for the whole week is – something that will always be remembered. Yep. Mm. I mean, I've been to two All-Americans. Um, you know, just hadn't had the luck I wanted in either one of them. Had dogs get hurt at both of them. But, right. you know, it was still some of the most memorable hunts I've been to. Right. Moneymaker won, won the one, and he dominated that hunt. I mean, he, he should – you were seeing him the second day and third day. You knew there wasn't a question of was he going to place. <laughs> he put on a clinic. Now, <laughs> I mean, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, so, um, so how did y'all's bench show go this weekend? Looked like y'all had a pretty pretty decent showing down there. We we had a de- we had a good show and we had fun. Um, Lynn, uh, Lindsay May, I can't remember exactly where she's from. She won it. She won the nationals with a young female. Um, that was a good looking Kelvin dog. Harris, she, she was nice though. Kelvin yep. Harris was best opposite sex. We won the Derby male class. Um, so <clears throat> we'll prepare for next year and yeah. Yeah. I understand. We'll see, yeah. I know anytime y'all go to a bench show, y'all are always a threat. That's 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 something I've always been super impressed again with y'all is that anytime y'all show up, especially on the bench show, it's uh, y'all are y'all are uh, always a threat for the win. I mean, some some people look at the bench show and just hate it, um, but at the same time, like I said earlier, I've got to look at a dog seven days a week. <laughs> I want a dog that's going to look good, right? Um, Right. And what, what a lot of people don't realize, you know, I'm, I'm going to go through a list of names and I want you, you to tell me what the first thing you think of is. And with the exception, and I'll give you this after I give you the names, mm-hmm. you got Chrome. Yep. Jimmy B. Mm-hmm. Hollywood. Right. Dylan. Yep. Clown. And this is not part of the sire of the year. Right. 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 What's one of the things you think about with all those dogs? Top studs. Top, Top producing studs. hounds. Right. Now think back to every one of those studs. Mm-hmm. Chrome won the bench show at the two-day derby. Right. 
good structure. Dylan, dual champion, good structure. Hollywood, one of the best looking studs you that has been around. Jimmy B, dual. <clears throat> um, you got all these top stud dogs that showed they were able to do it in the field and the combination portion. Dual champions. Or right. when being goes. And you know, some people may look at that and go, well, that don't matter. But if you think about it, and it, this is this is what an old guy told me one time. He says, Sonny, he said, would you drive a car where you could look at it and tell its tires were pointing east to west? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? He said, if you, if you looked at them and your tires were pointing Instead of them pointing the same direction, one was pointing a little left and one was pointing a little right. I said, no. I said, that mess your tires up. He said, right. Huh. He said, would you do one that the tires were pointing in? I said, no, that wouldn't drive right. He said, why would you hunt a dog that way? Huh. <clears throat> well, <And, laughs> makes a point. You know, and, I mean, I'm, I'm not knocking any dog. Right, but, right. If you, if you look at the structure of a dog, especially for three day in, he's got to be able to hold up. Mm -hmm. And if he's in line and built properly, it's easier to hold up over three days of five hours of running. Right. I mean. That makes a <laughs> lot of sense. A lot of sense. And I, and I mean, I contribute the looks of those dogs and the structure, you know, of all the top studs I just named is why they were able to produce. Right. Um, I've never, I mean, I've never heard it put like that, you know, you know, basing the, not, not, you know, I understand a hundred percent what you say. I've just never, I've never heard it put like that. It's, it's an interesting way to think of it. And I mean, east to west is a puppy, you know, their chest, they get older, the chest drops and mm -hmm. they mature into it that's fine right but if you i mean if you think back to most of your big studs i mean all of them were good looking hands i mean if you look back at the picture of mighty man when he won the top gun mm -hmm. he's, he's an extremely good looking hound for me he was a little short but still he went on to be a phenomenal producer that is still being still his legacy is still here today right i mean he was a phenomenal hound that looked the part <laughs> interesting yeah no that makes, a, I mean, makes a ton of sense makes I a mean, ton of that, sense and that's what i'm looking for i want a dog that can compete bench field and door right my ultimate goal is to have another field bench and door yeah been close i've had field and duels i've i've had field and duels and best opposite sex i mean just there was a better jet there that weekend. Right. And hey, that just makes me, you know, want it that much more. Yeah. Yeah. To put together the, the absolute perfect weekend. Yep. Yep. Nope. I get I mean, it. So I get it. I've, I've done it two times. I want to do it more, but right. <laughs> I mean, I've been extremely blessed for what I've done. Um, I guess that would be Calvary, correct? Yeah. Calvary won two field or two field bench and duels nine days apart. Mm. Then went on later the next year to win field and duel at the Top Gun. Uh, it was the first hundred and fifty dollar dog Top Gun. Right. Huh. Yeah, that but. now that I know that dog. You know, there's. There's dogs that will go down in the history book, but Calvary is definitely going to be at the top of the you know at the top of the list for sure. When you talk he, about all time a, greats, he he has been a blessing. I he he's still a character at nine years old. Uh, I went out here to feed him this afternoon, and before I got to him, he had his food pan looking at me, shaking it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting to you, right? I mean, <laughs> patience, he's patience. Nine years old. He don't mind telling you he's got attitude. Right. <laughs> you know, go to load dogs up and he's raising cane and I'm just looking at him going, boy, you ain't got nothing to prove. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. You've done I'm your part. Just rest it up a little bit. 
Yeah. Mm. I'm hoping he'll hit the Hall of Fame one day. I feel like he's a well-deserving hound for it. And, I believe that I time's going to come. I do. I truly yeah. believe that. Hey, when he when I'll probably shed a tear the day he he gets inducted. I mean, That's right. He's been a blessing, and there really ain't much more I could ask him to do. Right. Um, well, that's that's awesome that that y'all have that. That's a that ought to be a goal for anybody, you know. So congratulations, oh, yeah. you know. Just I feel like that's in order is, is to have a hound like that um, is is incredible. So hats off to y'all for that. Um, I mean, highlight of the weekend, we had several dogs right there knocking it, getting in. Um, had one eighth and or tied for eighth in hunting in the uh, nationals. Had another one that was thirteenth in endurance in the nationals. A young pup. Okay. Um, then one of the futurities were right there, like twenty second speed and drive. So I mean. All that was great, but the highlight of the weekend was there was a Calvary pup that HDA'd in the Nationals, and this is she category of the Futurity and the Nationals the last two years, and this is the first year she's HDA'd. So I mean, awesome, getting better and better each year. And, oh yeah, seeing that and being there and being able to get in the picture up with her. I mean, that was a priceless weekend. That's awesome. Chris Graham, his son, have done an excellent job with that jip and put in the hard work right um, it yeah seeing something is that's come off of one of your dogs especially you know, one that you're you know extremely proud of which calvary has been uh producing some pretty good stuff too uh, all across yeah, the board he, he i mean he's produced field benches duels um outside hounds i mean right a little bit of here a little bit there my kind of hound. right yep right so uh was that was that what y'all uh ended up with is those those uh the, the category and the the ones that were really close i didn't know if y'all had any more yeah, sneak in or not no nah, we didn't have any sneak in we had them right there the one jip didn't category she was tied for eighth but gotcha didn't. She didn't have enough speed and drive, so I can't even say she was tied for eight. She had the same amount of hunting. Right. It just makes me, makes me feel a little better knowing I was that close. Just, <laughs> right. Uh, I got gotcha. you. I mean, 601 dogs and be, being in the top 20 is an extreme accomplishment. Yes. Yes. I mean. Yes. That's, that's, I mean, that's a lot I'm, of hounds. That's a lot of dogs. I mean, I remember the old days going to pools. I think Virginia State had 700 and some dogs, the hunt I went to. But mm -hmm. those days are gone. I mean, unless you go to somewhere like the Nationals or the All-American on the outside. Right. Right. I mean. I know I want to go something fierce. I, I really, truly, truly want to go something fierce. I just, I got to make it all line up. I'm hoping in the next couple of years I can I can make it work and, and be able to get down there. But man, that's just I feel like anybody that is in the sport should should take the time, like we talked about earlier, they should take the time and try to make it happen. Oh, one hundred percent. Yep. I mean it's you'll never I mean, it's it's unbelievable. I can't tell you how much I mean Yeah. Just yeah. It's relaxing. It's stressful and relaxing at the same time, but that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, um, we talked about that before I started. We started recording. That's it's about like hunting season. That you love every second of it. It's the most fun thing you'll ever do. And then the moment it's over, it's like, man, I can breathe again. I it, I had so much fun. I enjoyed every second of it. But good God, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> it's it's good to be home. But if you told me I could hit rewind and be leaving out to go to Mississippi tomorrow morning, I'd hit that rewind button. I, I get mean, it. Yep, yeah. I understand 100%. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking at going back to the All-American in February. Okay. I mean, it's just hey, – they'll, they'll have some deer season up under them. Right. Maybe we can go down there and move up a few spots. There I mean, you go. There you go. You never know unless you go and cast them. That's it. You don't know until you try. 
So, well, um, yeah. you now y'all are very heavily involved, and you're not just on the on the on the field side. Y'all are part of organizations. Y'all are part of um, a, a lot of different stuff in the sport. You know what what involvements do you have in the sport? Let's see, we're. We're in the Virginia International Board, North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina Running Hounds. Um, Angela's part of the National Board. We put on, we're part, or we do the North Carolina International. Um, and that's it right now that I can think of. I can't remember any other boards I've been put on. I may have forgot. Gotcha. Gotcha. I knew y'all were. It seemed like a. I know there. It seems like a little hot streak there for a while that y'all have a, a few hunts that you're pretty heavily involved in. You know, I know me and you were. You know, I'm on the board with y'all for the Virginia International, and that was one of the first board meetings that I'd got to go to for a hunt. And that was. It was really neat to see all that. You know, and how yeah. how well done it is. You know, Mr. Booker does a an excellent. And his oh, he, wife do an excellent job with all that. He does a phenomenal job. Yep. Um, you know, <laughs> you, you hear a lot of complaints at hunt. Oh, this wasn't done or that wasn't done. But people don't realize the stress or what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been part of hunts and been part of boards to where we lost money and they come to the boards members. Hey, you got 50 bucks so we can cover expenses and I had to do that before. Right. I right. mean, it's just there's a lot more you know the average hunter or the young hunter you know they pull up they give their 35 40 dollar entry fee they run their hound it gets called out you know hopefully they place or whatever then they go home and they don't see anything else right but, right yep you know, it's uh, to get the reports and everything done, and you, you get the bench show card or the entry sheet, and it ain't half filled out. <laughs> right. it's, um, or or you, you you read it the way somebody wrote it the best you can, and then they fuss at you. Well, you, you put my name dog's name wrong in the book. Right. Right. I mean, and, hey, I'm guilty of that because my handwriting's horrible. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the ones that are going – What's this dog's name? <laughs> right. <laughs> the computer has made me uh, rough, and I just need to go ahead and start typing mine out and before I go to a field trial. I need to start doing the same thing. I I, I placed it in the Tidewater this year, and the poor stud dog, my my sloppy handwriting, his now reads Ingrills LT instead of Ingvilles LT. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's – I mean, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Um, <laughs> now, are you and your wife both, you know, Angela, y'all are, are both on most of those boards together, correct? Yeah. Um, Virginia International and North Carolina International, we are. She, gotcha. she is a, um, so right. we, we help out as much as we can with those and do anything we can anytime we're asked. Cause I mean, that's, that's what people don't realize comes or I'm some do some don't you get to the judge in portion and just like I was in charge of getting the judges from North Carolina International I had I think at one time 25 judges that said yeah we're going to be there right the mor morning of the hunt I got there and had 14 yep and yep. and I'm not talking three months before hey yeah I'm gonna be there I'm talking week of right and you know Everyone that shows up to judge, I mean, it, it's a thankless job. And but I mean, without our judges, we wouldn't be anywhere as a sport. So. Hey, I mean, it's one thing that I preach constantly is, you know, I understand, <clears throat> I understand that, you know, especially three day hunts, you know, it's it's not easy to sacrifice three days. The, especially the way you know workplaces are now the the working man it's hard for somebody to get off three days and, and not for your own enjoyment but if we don't if we as hunters don't stick together and and sacrifice some of those weekends then this sport's gonna die i mean I, i've literally been to hunts where i've seen four judges mm-hmm and you know I, how in the world those four judges done it i guess they knew the pen like the back of their hand because i mean that's 
only place they hunted, they put up a good scoreboard. Right. I mean, but it made me wonder, hey, what would five more have done? Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, no you know, Everybody, you know, when, when we cast dogs that first day, you know, every dog had the chance. And I think the high dog the last day put up a hunting score with 350 speed and drive before judges. Wow. I mean. Wow. That, that's it, getting um, it in with four judges. I don't care what pen it is. Yeah. That's getting it in. I mean, hey, all I can say is they work their tails off. Yeah. Uh, it was just. <laughs> judges do not get the respect or the kudos that they deserve for what they do. Right. Right. Yep. I agree 100%. I agree a hundred percent. Now, um, you know, I mentioned your wife, you mentioned Angela and, um, y'all both have a, a passion for this sport. It's, yep. it's very, it's a very beautiful thing to see, especially, and you don't see it very often. It, it, it's a, a husband and wife that have the same passion and especially as, as passionate as y'all are, you know, you know, I, I guess my question behind it is, you know, what do you think drives that com- combined? I know, I know you said you got in and got hooked, and but you know, with her as well, I know I, I know she's not here to speak for her own self, but you know, what kind of got her involved in in finding that passion together and y'all working as a team? You know, what do you think drives mm-hmm. that so much? What started her into it was she, um, her daddy was a lifelong hunter, Mister Allen Lawson. Um, he he carried her and she placed a dog ninth on the bench and got one of the little pedestal trophies and from that moment on she was hooked on the bench uh-huh. uh, as a little kid that led to getting her first show <laughs> dog ryan's pretty boy um and that hooked her gotcha um, and so when we met we actually met at the virginia international and it kicked off and right. it's hit it's been history since. <laughs> um, I, I like to think what drives her is her trying to beat me. I mean, <laughs> so that's one of them times she might have smacked you on top of the head if she was sitting there, right? Oh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pay for that one later. <laughs> right. I know that. I'm, I'm just waiting for somebody to send that screen sh- or little voice <laughs> clip to her. But, <laughs> Uh, that payment's coming back. <laughs> it's all worth it. It's all worth it in the hey, end. But right, hey, if, if, if it gets too bad, I'll just remind her, her daughter beat her at the Labonna. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Now she's uh she's coming on along and seems to be following y'all's footsteps pretty good. And it's um she, she enjoys it. Um she uh she just graduated college and starting work and real life and yep she's doing real good i'm i'm beyond proud of the young lady she's grew up to be good um, yeah that's awesome I, I thought i remember that she had just finished up college I, I think she had finished up right before the or right around the virginia international right she, she graduated i think the week before the virginia international and was down there and putting work in that weekend mm-hmm. yep i mean she's she helps us so much i mean I can't never thank her enough. I mean, it's, 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 she's a blessing. It's awesome that it's a, it's a, it's a full family thing. It's a family thing. Yep. That's awesome. You just don't, you know, I was actually listening to a, um, I believe it was the Houndsman XP this morning and they were talking, uh, it was a bunch of them together sitting around talking and it was, they were talking about the differences of how, their marriage is with the hound hunting and stuff like that. And, you know, my, my wife, I love her to death, but she has nothing to do with any of this. She could care less about any of it. But that's my break. That's our break from each other. But it really is. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with either way, but it is, it's a beautiful thing to see y'all as a family work together. It really is. And it's, and I mean, it's really inspirational, honestly. Every couple is different. I mean, Right. I mean, that's that's one thing I like about the bench show. Um, you've got kids out here. I, I love the Virginia International having the youth handling. I mean, you've got kids out here that may 
I mean, just like Angela, the night place on the bench that sparked a lifelong interest. You know, who's that next kid that can get sparked? Right. I mean, how many, how many kids? I mean, if it if it gets ten kids, hey, I want to go show a dog. I want to go hunt a dog. You know, what path are we putting them on compared to where they could be? Right. Because if they're if they're showing a dog, if they're hunting a dog. You know, and they get that passion behind it. They're not going to be out there in the streets. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd much rather see a kid out here hunting than running the streets and getting in some kind of trouble. Yep, I, you know, I can't agree more. Deer hunting. I mean, I was the kid that was taking deer hunting. So where could I have been? You know, my life could be a whole different life if my buddy in high school hadn't have said, "Hey, let's go hunting." Right. Right. Nope, I fully agree. Well, um, let's touch on the bench showing a little bit. I know we, you know, we've talked on it a little bit, you know, here and there, and uh, but um, what's some of y'all's? And this could go on forever, but y'all, y'all have had some very good success on the bench show. What is some of y'all's big highlights of of y'all's bench show career? Um, we've won the nationals six times um mike was the first grand national champion so he won the nationals and he come back the next year and challenged chance which was his younger litter mate that had won the nationals that year to grand national wow co um you know that's it's cool to say, hey, we we won the we won the nationals. Then we come back the next year, won the nationals again, and competed for a grand national. That's insane. <laughs> that's yeah. I, that's out incredible. Out of the six national cha- six national champions, two of them are grand national. Um, Cody won the nationals in twenty twenty two, and was challenged for the grand national by the twenty twenty one winner and. He won the Grand National. I mean, so for those that, listening a, that don't un, you know, that aren't understanding, what's your what's the difference in your national and your Grand National champion? Um, your the national champion, any anyone that wins the nationals, the I mean, the nationals is the biggest of the biggest and the best of the best show. Um, wh- whoever wins it can come back the next year and challenge the winner of the next year's nationals or, you know, the dog could take two or three years off and come back and challenge the current winner. Mm -hmm. And it would be a showdown between the two national champions to see which one was the best, you know, best of the two. And whoever wins that's granted a grand national championship title. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I thought I thought I understood that correctly, but I wanted to make sure that was I was thinking a hundred percent. If um let's see, Mike done it, Susan Alwine done it, I can't remember the female's name, and then Cody done it, and that's the only three grand national champions since I think nineteen seventy eight. I think it was Kelly Mountain's prime time. Now, don't quote me on that because I'm going off memory, and my memory may be a little fuzzy. But I think <laughs> prime time was the last Grand National before those three. Gotcha, um, man. It's, that's I'll say that's I mean that's a hard feat, you know, to come back and 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 do something like that. That's that's an incredible feat. Yeah. Um. um now you know we kind of you kind of touched on that right there. It's a good kind of interlude, you know intro into the next little sp- spot of that is the the past and the present of, of bench showing you know i know you know I, i'm i know you're not a 80 year old person and you know grew up back in those times and stuff like that but it seems you know and I, i'm just kind of you know i'm still fresh ish into the sport you know i've only been in for a handful of years now but if you go back and look at the old pictures from like the chase and and see the guys at the bench shows and it was it the bench show was a huge thing you know it was you know the guys were in suits and ties and they, they were in gymnasiums and people were it was, i mean the stadium was packed and, and watching you know what do you think 
in your opinion, what do you think changed that as the years progressed? I think society. Um, I mean, you look at the way most people dress today. I mean, I, I would hate to take a guess, but a lot of people don't own a suit. Right. I mean, everybody went for comfort, and I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, things things come full circle. It may come full circle. Right. Um, but. I think today about the only people that really wear suits are doctors, lawyers, and um, you know, office people that are in the office all day. Right, right. You know, they, I would love to have seen the shows 30, 40, 50 years ago. Oh, man. Um, where you had 50, 60 show dogs that where you were picking up, you know, dogs were scoring between 92 and – 97 98 points where you had you know little tiny details were the difference between your first and your fifth place dog right um, you know that's that's a lot of people don't even realize there's a point scale yeah for them you know. yeah um, i know because i mean i've never been to any big big bench shows so i've never even seen anybody break it down on points i've never seen it in person never seen a breakdown of points on on a bench show I, I can usually do it in my head by looking at the dog, give you a rough score of it. Right. Um, but I mean, I've had people call me, Hey, you're, you're helping put this hunt on. Um, can I judge the bench show? Well, have you ever showed a dog? No, I ain't never showed a dog before. Do you know the rule book or do you know the point system? And we actually had a guy go, there's a point system. <laughs> right. <laughs> I right. mean, <laughs> It's not about, hey, my buddy's wanting to show a dog. I want him to win. Right. There's there's a point system behind there. Yeah. I mean, it's just like going out and judging the field. I can't, you know, hey, I like the way that dog's working the first hour. I'm going to give it 70 to hunt the first hour. It, you know, yeah, you dude. can't do that. Right. Don't work like that. <laughs> you know, so you got to know the rule book and judge the dog from A to, a to Z in the rule book. I mean, some judges do a great job of it, and then I've seen other judges that I disagree with their opinion. Yeah. But, I mean, that's the great thing about it. There's, you know, it's the judge's opinion. Right. 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 Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's 100% true. Um, now, you know, we kind of, you know, with the, with the, the past and the present thing, talking about, the way it used to be, do you feel like there, you know, I, I got it in my notes uh, and I kind of got it circled e etiquette for a bench show. One thing that I noticed that a lot, and maybe I, I see, I, I enjoy the bench show. I know a lot of people don't necessarily mm -hmm. enjoy the bench show as much anymore. I, yeah. I thoroughly enjoy it. Like if I judge in the hunt and I have nothing to do with the bench show, I, I wake up from my nap if there, if it was a you know early morning hunt, I'll wake up and go back to the pen just to go watch the bench show. I mm -hmm. love watching a bench show. Um, mm -hmm. But it seems like there's an etiquette that is seen, it is lost. You know, what are some things etiquette wise that you would like to see a little bit more of? I, I mean, I know a common one is just everybody needs to be quiet. Yeah, I mean. It, I mean, I've seen different things over the year. I've, I've been competing for best in show and the guy that was competing for best, you know, best in show, best opposite sex kids running right in front of the bench the whole time. Right. I mean, he, he won the show hit. I mean, I'm not going to make excuses. His dog showed a lot better. Than mine. Right. You know, it's people don't realize you put the work, you know, because some people, the only time they put a dog on the bench is when they're painting it. Yeah. And they go, oh, well, this, well, Jane scored good today, so I'm going to carry her up there. Right. You know, it's, and if, if you go to a bench show, you can tell, and a lot of people don't think of this. If, if you don't trim your dog's toenails, the toenails will get long. It'll eventually break the foot down to where it ain't as tight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, you go to the bench show and you look at dogs' toenails and they might have one that's ripped out or, you know, you can see the quick. And it's, you know, 
you got to take time to prep your dog. I mean, because you can have the best dog in the world, but if you don't have it prepped right, it is, I mean, if it's not in the right kind of shape, there's a lot of things that you can do yourself to have them prepared. Right. Um, one, one opinion I've got, um, and some people may disagree with this or may agree with it, when it's me showing my dog, it is me versus everyone else. Right. When it's when it's that dog, you know, and they may be sixty dogs I'm competing against, eighty at a big show, hundred, you know, sometimes maybe even a hundred, because I have seen as many as a hundred be shown. Mm-hmm. It's me versus them. Now, when I cast that dog day one, a judge can be looking left, a fox slip across and go right. He never heard it. He think the dog was wrong. Right. Scratching for back. Yep. Well, you know that that's yeah. You know, and it happens. Hey, that's that dog out there working, and but when it comes down to the bench, it's me and the dog versus whoever, and that's me working, knowing what my dog's faults are, and trying to highlight his his good portions. Right, right. But yep, no, I'm I mean, with you. Yep, yep. If um, See, yeah, and. I, and a lot of people, you know, they don't care anything about showing a dog. Right. Um, I've been up to, I was up at Tar River a couple of years ago and there was three of my buddies sitting up there mm-hmm. and I told them, I said, you should show these three gyps. Mm-hmm. Uh, we ain't going to show them. We've never messed with them. Well, they ended up going and showing them. And I think the gyps were second, third and fourth on the bench. <laughs> And all three of them were in the top four in the field. I mean, so all three of them were eligible for a duel. I can't remember which one of them won a duel because I mean, right. it's probably been 15 years ago. But they just looked at me and go, you were right. Yep. So, well, I said, you know, all three of the Jips had good scores. Why wouldn't you show yeah, Exactly. Them? Exactly. I mean, yeah. And, yeah. So, yep. I'm it's, with it's you. all about you and the dog. Right. Right. And it And it is a... And one thing that I've learned is it seems like each dog, because I try, I don't have all the time in the world, and and I don't practice on the bench like I should. I try to do it a little bit every now and then, but finding the time to do it is 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 so is so hard. But oh yeah, playing with them, you do find uh, you do find little nicks that make them stand like you want them to. And I mean, I think learning the dog and spending the time with them and, and figuring out, you know, what little, like I, I got, a, I got one dog that I can, you know, kind of squeeze the base of his tail and it makes him lean up on his toes better. Then mm-hmm. I got another dog I can kind of scratch up under his belly and that makes him lean up on his toes better. Well, it's I mean, fun. dogs are, every one of them's different. Yep. Every one of them's got a different personality. Right. And every one of them's got certain things that's going to make a dog shut down or show good. I mean, right. Some dogs will show excellent for me, and Angela can touch them, and they will not do anything for her. And other dogs, <laughs> I look at her and go, "This is your dog." <laughs> right. <laughs> and I mean, that's usually how it works. Yep. Um, yep. It's yep. just, I mean, every. I mean, everybody's like that. You've got certain people that you like that you'll work for, and yeah, that's right, that's right. Well, and it's funny you say that. Even like at the Maryland State this year, um, uh, I showed uh, my buddy MJ had a female he wanted me to show, and I put her up on the. You know, I got her set up and and started messing with her. And he looked over and I saw his eyes were just bugged out. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> I said, what is wrong with him? Well, they put me up to first on the bench when you know in her class. I'm like, okay, cool, you know, I'm the first all age female. So we ended up thing. He say, "How did you do that?" <laughs> he's like, he's like, she never stands for me. He's like, that was she stands good for me. But man, you had her, you had her tight, dude. And uh, we ended up uh, fun. Ironically, I, I had won the, uh, the female derby. So we ended up going head to head with those two dogs, and it was that was a that was something I'll always remember as being able to go head to head with those two dogs down there. But 
<clears throat> but yeah, like you said, you know, it's funny how certain dogs react to certain people in, in certain different ways. I mean, that's, you it's, know, you asked earlier what one of the biggest accomplishments was. Um, I mean, this is nothing compared to the nationals, right? But winning all four classes, and uh, then you're just sitting there going, "Oh my God, I have got the four best looking dogs here." I mean, <laughs> that's it, awesome. <laughs> it's. I mean, I I got down. I want you know, buddy of mine helped me win the um. You know, I can't even remember what dogs it was, but he helped me with the males versus the males and the females versus the females. And then they looked at me, so what you're going to do? Right. I handed me my buddy one, one dog and I called one of my other friends over. I said, you show them. They said, what? <laughs> I said, look, I'm going to watch this. I said, I've never got to see this. I'm, saying, this, this, I'm not going to, you know, God has blessed me and I'm going to win either way. So that's all I, and they just looked at me and then they showed the dogs and i can't remember which one won it but i mean it was awesome to be able to watch that that's incredible yep that's awesome uh, i would have never even thought about that you know my side i would have took over and said all right well i want this one to win so i'm going to show it because i think <laughs> this one has deserves it more i never would have thought about sitting back and just watching it and soaking it all in that's awesome yeah i mean it's it soaking it in and just knowing and going this was you know because people don't see that the time that goes in getting them prepped, you know, right. Or the work, you know, they don't see the behind the scene. They just see you go up there and a dog, Oh, that dog shows good. I mean, some people like it. Some people hate it. Yeah. I mean, it's just a taste their own. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, I got friends that, you know, like you said, the only time they're going to bench is if they got a dog sitting in the top 20 or something like that. And they think they got a chance to make the duel. Um, but for the most part, they can give, they give, you know, they care less about it, but, uh, but I love it. I'm I'm with you. I love it. Those same guys, how many times have they had it to where a dog would have been a duel if they would have showed it and worked harder? Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. I've, I've seen dogs and know they have, uh, you know, know they've been in the top four on the field, and I look at them and go, oh, my God, why didn't you show this stuff? I don't yeah. care nothing about it. Right. Uh, you probably missed a couple-time dual champions here. Right. I mean. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I tell you what, that's a, that's a very good uh, – it's a very good segue to – we're kind of creeping up on an hour, so it's a very good segue, and I feel like this uh, – our closing topic here may, may go on because – you may, uh, I, and before we get started in the closing topic, I'm going to go ahead and forewarn you. I'm going to play the devil's advocate with you. All right, that on the, works on the on the closing topic because I feel like that would be good to listen to, and uh, I have mixed feelings on it, my own All self. Right. So, I believe it was last year, if I'm not mistaken, the Masters program implemented a new rule, and. Yep. No scratch dogs after the first day will be allowed to be shown. Mm-hmm. Let's talk on that. What is your uh-huh. what is your thought process on this new rule? Well, before I get into that, I'm I'm you know we've all been to that hunt where we felt something, you know, Hey, something just wasn't quite right. Or I've mastered that hunt to where I found it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And was able to expose someone. Right. So, you know, before we go into it, you know, say John Doe's got his buddy out there and James has been beating John Doe's buddy the last six shows with a dog. Mm -hmm. This phenomenal dog, good dog in the field. But James has been second six times in a row and would be a six-time bench champion if it wasn't for this one dog. Mm -hmm. Well, Judge just says, hey, that dog was loafing. He took that dog out. Hmm. Could it happen? Yeah. I mean, in, in all seriousness, how many scratch dogs are shown in a year to make them say, hey, we've got to go into this? Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, if you're talking, there's, I know nationally affiliated, 
there's 130 some hunts i'm assuming masters have probably got double that or you know 140 150 associations right afha's got probably another 60 or 70 so you're talking 300 400 hunts maybe and i I may be way off on my numbers right so we're really worried about 10 or 15 dogs through 400 hunts to pass a rule right i mean if if it wasn't for that portion Mm -hmm. of somebody hey i'm gonna take this dog out so they can't show because i've been i've been to shows um and or i didn't go i went up to watch the show Mm -hmm. and watched a hundred percent show jip that had made the first day of running right extremely nice dog you know where she placed on the bench she was excused no kidding now this is a dog that has went on to win open shows and you know win some big time shows right that was excused right um, you remember the Mike dog that made the grand national champion? Yes. A lot of people don't realize it. You know where he placed in his first bench show? Huh? Ninth. No kidding. Mm-hmm. So a, a dog that went on to win the Georgia international, uh, Georgia international, Virginia international chase classic. Um, Went on to win five major shows, right? Including Grand National and National Champion. There was eight dogs at, at that show better than him that week. Yeah. I mean, but everybody's got their own opinion on it. Right. So, I mean, that the only reason I don't like it is if it gets to the point someone could take a good dog out. Because mm-hmm. think back to your biggest accomplishments. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll tell you, um, Lamar Blaylock had a dog named Hillbilly Deluxe. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal show dog. I mean, he was too big. He was probably 20, 28, 29 inches tall. Right. Um, it was the Atlantic States held at Pamplico. Now, this has probably been 16 years ago. Mm-hmm. This is one of my biggest victories. I won the all-age female with a jip I had named Samantha. Won the derby male with a dog I had, Chrome. Right. And they're sitting there, and Lamar won the all-age male. Mm-hmm. And they're sitting there looking at me, and I had people actually laughing at me that I was going up to show against that dog. Well, oh. I, told, I, I made the comment. I said, look, I said, Chrome's nice enough. I said, but structure, I said, I think Samantha can beat him. Right. I said, he's just a little bit too oversized. Mm-hmm. Well, we got down to it. I put Chrome up against him. He beat Chrome. Those same boys laughed at me again. They said, you know, I won the all age fem- or won the female class with Samantha. And they're like, you're going back up there? I said, yep. I said, I think I can beat him. Right. And we put those two dogs up. And the judge ended up pulling a measuring stick out, and he was too big. Huh. And he made the comment that, you know, he was going with her because she was in the height standard. Wow. And he, he said they were both, both both equal in points, and he referred back to the height, you know, being a preferred height. Right. And that was, you know, I remember that 15 years later. Like, I can I can sit there and see it. The only thing I can't remember is what numbers I had on the dogs. Right, but right. Go, going through everything, I can still remember the people laughing at me. The, there's no way you're going to beat this show dog. Right. Well, I did, and that was a great – I mean, rem- to remember it in that kind of detail 15 years later. Right. You know, Rick Flair said, to be the man, you got to beat the man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, you know – so, you know, what do, what do you – and here's my devil's advocate part. All right. And this is, the, this is the thing that I've heard most people say. And, I, like I said, I have mixed feelings about it. I tend to go towards the devil advocate side on it. Um, oh, yeah. 
but what it, mo- the most common I hear is if a dog that was scratched in the first day, you know, won the bench show, and my dog <laughs> finished fifth on the bench. Okay. That bent that scratched bench show dog just screwed my dog out of the chance at a duel. That's the one but thing I'm, that I hear the most out of everything. How many times does it happen though? It, I mean, I know it happens. Right. I mean, and but Nick, where are you going to stop it at? Are you going to stop it at just bent shows, or are people going to get to the point they go, "Hey, this pen owner's out running me at every hunt we go to here. <laughs> he can't. He can't run his pen anymore." Right. Right. You Which know, I've heard that comment it, made a lot too. <laughs> you know. You know, hey, I'm all, all for why don't we have a hunt? If you can't place on the top 10 in the bench, you don't get to enter the field. I mean, no. God bless people would have a heart attack with that. <laughs> right. You know, right. We're going to have the bench set. You know, we got 200 dogs here. If you don't end up in the top 10, you're not allowed to enter. Right. You know, it just, you know, some people just don't care about the structure. And I mean, that's where the divide is. And have have I been there before? and got beat out like that yep yeah I, I, the worst part i beat myself out before right i had a now he was i mean he was still eligible but i won the bench show with a male dog and had a buddy of mine show my other dog and he was fifth on the bench in one field right so you know did i beat i beat myself out of the duel that weekend by showing the other male but right it's about beating the best if you can't beat the best i mean right to right. me and and no one can say that at a master's hunt they beat the best that was eligible right how can they say they beat the best that was there right um and see and i I, I, you, I completely i i completely agree to that and like i said this is where my mixed feelings in like part of me is like no you, you really shouldn't you really shouldn't put that that situation out there. I mean, I've I've taken a dog and I've gone and looked, and if he was scratched, I've walked him up there. You know, in national hunt, or yeah, in national excuse me, in a nationals hunt, I've walked the dog up there, gone and looked at the class, and if I think I could have placed top four with a scratched dog, I pull, or I'll I'll mm-hmm. still bench, but I'll manipulate my dog to make sure he doesn't go very far. Yeah, you know, and that's just that. I mean, that's that's my thing about it. But I also see it from the side, like you're talking, like why if if bench show is your thing, there's not enough open shows anymore. I mean, at least that I know of that you can go to I mean, to just go for the open show. You know, if I you're in a, six, go ahead. Sorry, I, I think there's six or seven right now. Right, and and people want to you know yell oh show dogs or dang show dogs this or that. Right now, being shown as far as people owning show dogs that I can count up in my head, I think there's six or seven people that own pure show dogs throughout the whole country. Right. So I mean, if you look at the demographic of that to the hunters i mean it's 0.00 percent of right. <laughs> what's right. out there right so i mean yeah if it was if it was a show dog showing up every weekend winning every single show i could see them doing that if the dog wouldn't run right but i mean and and i've had this argument with some of my buddies i mean will i show a scratch dog more than likely not. Right. Um, have I in the past? Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, but is it something like I'm getting <laughs> ready to go to Merle here in three weeks? Mm-hmm. If I have a dog get scratched the first day, will I show it? Uh, no. More, I mean, it's not going to happen. Right. But if, I mean, yeah. it's just, I can see both sides. Yeah. I mean, because I've been on both sides. Right. Um, but at the same time, it, you want to beat the best, 
I mean, yep. That's yep. the thing about it. You know, I've I've had a guy come to me before. You know, he beat me with a phenomenal female. I mean, and, and he was an older hunter, and he was boy when he when he was claimed the best in show. You could see the happiness in his face, right? And I mean, that was priceless. He said, "I just beat you." He <laughs> right. said, "That's been." He said, "You know," and I don't think of myself as anybody. I mean, I'm just. I'm just me. Yeah, yeah. But it meant the world to him because he won that show, and he beat me with a dog. He said, "Man, I've been following that dog." He said, "I didn't think I had a." Ch-. Uh, he said, "I didn't think I had a chance." Right. He said, "But you, I beat him. Uh-huh. I actually ended up buying the jip from him when when he quit field trial and raised puppies off of her because she was that nice." Right, right. Um, I'm, matter of fact, I'm hunting. I've got grand pups off of her right now. I mean, <laughs> she, she was that nice of a dog. Right. That's yeah. That's awesome. But, but no, I mean, I mean, know, it's, I, I think that I know that stirred, man. I, I remember when that rule dropped, good God, did that stir the pot, man, did that stir the did. pot. And I mean, you've got people that are, that are going to give me, you know, say I'm wrong for it, but you know, I look at it this way. You want to beat the best, you've got to beat, you know, to yeah. be the best, you got to beat the best. Right. right. That, um, yep. you know, yep. I, if, you, if you look back and over the years, there's certain dogs throughout that year that you see in the Chase Magazine. They won a couple shows. They won a couple duels. You know, that's the dog I want to show against and beat that year. Right. I want to beat the best and see how I compare to them. Right. Right. Um, when Mr. Ronnie McMillan had Pharaoh, Pharaoh was, I mean, he was a phenomenal hound. Right. I got to see him. I got to compete against him at the all American and, and he may have pulled a trick and, you know, got my wife to show the dog. for him. <laughs> I mean, she whooped me on that show, but he had a better dog. Right. Um, yeah, but I got to compete against him. Now, if I'd have beat Farrah and beat Angela that week, boy, you couldn't have told me anything. <laughs> you might have had to find a new I ride mean, home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but. Oh, man. You know, I don't want to. Ne- I've never had anything given to me. Yeah. I've worked for everything I've had in my life. Right. And if I walk away from somewhere, I want to know I beat the best. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total and sense. Unfortunately, and fortunately, with the rule of the Masters, if I go to a Masters hunt, I can only say I beat the best that was eligible. Right, right. I, I can mean, respect that. I can I can definitely respect it, you know, and I, I can I can respect that, you know, like even you said it, you just said it, you know, like if, if you get a scratch town, are you going to show it? Probably not. Probably not. But, you know, I, I, I 100% respect both ways. If you have a hound that yeah. – you're like, I can go out here and beat the all these dogs on the bench, and I can make a bench champion. And now I have a bench champion in my lots. And I yep. can register him as a bench champion. I have the utmost respect for the person that says, you know what, even though I'm going to get screamed at, yelled at, thought down on, I'm going to go out there and make a bench champion. And they go out there and do it. I have the utmost respect for it. And, I mean – a lot of the people that complain about it, did they even show dogs? Yeah. I mean, that that's that's what I like to hear. Somebody complaining about a, a dog and look, and they didn't show a single dog all night. They just wanted to stir the pot. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> and, you know, if we get – I mean, and this is the point I made. You've got your daughter out there, and she's got a dog – that she loves that's her dog Mm -hmm. that dog got scratched that day how are you going to tell her she can't show her dog Uh, man i never thought about it like that yeah i mean that's that's her dog you throw the heartstrings in there that time (laughs) i mean you know daddy this is my dog why can't i show it right i mean it just Mm, and, and what if that one show breaks their heart where they never want to hunt or show again. Yeah. What have we done as a sport? Right. Right. 
Now, do you? I mean, do you see the Nationals ever going to that rule? The Nationals, uh, I, you know, I the don't. Nationals rule. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I do either. I don't foresee that coming. I mean, the Nationals has done some changing, and I mean, the world of fox hunting has changed so much in the last twenty years. Right. I mean, 20 years ago, you had dogs that would run 10, 15 hours. You were still trying to catch them the next morning with a beep, beep collar. Right. You never saw a dog hardly in the road. Yep. And, I mean, now you see dogs all in the road, and if they're out there at six and a half hours, it's because the Garmin collars quit. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it, I think the longest it took us to get caught up on in Grenada on the outside was – three hours wow and you're talking you talking some of the dogs had blown out and were i know i was tracking 10 miles at one time from cast the dogs had blew out was in a straight line 10 miles mm. Oh. Mm. But, man but so, uh i mean you're able to catch those up in um three hours i mean you're in a pen you're gonna have them caught up a lot quicker right than that. right right at least you should yeah yep but well chris man you this is many dogs go ahead um, i'm sorry i didn't like, mean to interrupt you i was gonna say you don't see many dogs like mr benny bennett had that he was still you know looking the next morning anymore now I mean, now oh and you know we can, we didn't really get the chance to touch on it at the beginning. How about the perfect score down there this weekend? Oh, I and I would have felt bad if I hadn't thought about it. Blaine, you know, Blaine, his jet put it on everybody. I mean that <laughs> the Mississippi boys. When you go down there, you got to have right to run with them. And that jet, she showed us she was the national champion, and we wasn't in her league. No. I mean, <laughs> First hunting, first trailing, first speed and drive. Ah, I mean, gosh, that's she incredible, was phenomenal. man. Phenomenal. I mean, it just, it was unbelievable. I think she had 35 to trail, 85 to hunt, four something to run. Yep. Um, she one, put up 185 the last day. Golly, that's. Ah oh, man, that, that's that's picture perfect. That's picture perfect. Yeah, I mean, that's what everybody should should shoot for is the ultimate dog. Right. I mean, Blaine done something this weekend that was I can't tell you the last time it's been done. Yeah. Um, I follow a lot of hunts. I've seen some perfect scores. Right. There hasn't been. I can't tell you the last perfect score, and to do it was he he done he outrun six hundred dogs. Yeah, he he was in a league of his own. And I think that I don't remember the last time. I don't I don't know that I've been in the sport since I've been in the sport. I don't know that I've seen a perfect score, at least just off of my memory. My memory is not the best in the world, but I don't remember ever seeing a perfect score. I have seen some at hunts, but none I was at. Right. Um, this is the first hunt I can remember being at and seeing the perfect score. And, I mean, she was phenomenal. Mm. I mean, mm. yeah, that that would be my – if I had the perfect score at the Nationals, I don't know if I could come back to a field trial. <laughs> right. I mean, how do you get better than that? Just, just, just hang it up there and just call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> Like, look, guys, I'm done. Yep. Why? I just, you just won the Nationals. Yeah, I ain't got nothing else to do. I nothing mean, else to just, prove. I'm going home. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, well, Chris, this has been an excellent episode, man. I uh, definitely appreciate you coming on uh, and talking with you. Uh, definitely a lot of cool insight and love the story from the uh, from the from the from y'all's week and. All that kind of good stuff. So, uh, what y'all's what y'all's next hunt you got coming up? Um, going to the hunt end of end of uh, De- or first of December, the end of November at Merle's. Gotcha. I think it's the Eastern Kentucky. I, I can't remember the name of it. I'm um, Merle Hogue has got a phenomenal pen up 
up in Kentucky, hard running hills, valleys. I mean, it's yeah, it's unbelievable up there. Yeah, I, I that's one on my on my list for next year. I, I have every intention on trying to make something work up there and trying to go, but uh, but I've I've heard a lot of good things about that place. You're not gonna find a better facility, better people. Get up there and start listening to Jim Strong and some of the old timers up there. It is unbelievable just the time that you have. Love it. Love that's it. that's what I love about it. I mean, yep, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I, I have, I'm, I'm hoping this weekend. You know, we got the Southern Classic at Billy Pools this weekend, and I'm I'm hoping that I'm I'm gonna take my recording equipment down there, and I'm hoping that maybe one evening or maybe while the hunt's going on, I can get a couple guys around and we'll just sit around and just tell stories, and record telling stories. I'm hoping that maybe I can get some of these old timers. At some of these other hunts that I go to, maybe next year to to do the same thing. Yeah, because I mean, at a certain point, I mean, the old timers that tell me and you a story, if we're not able to record it, then that's going to be lost for this younger generation coming. Right. I mean, I don't want to consider myself anywhere near an old timer. I feel like I'm still a young young <laughs> guy in this, this right. Um, sport. Right. But at some point, we will become the old timers. Yeah. And you know, I would, God rest her soul, Miss Andrew and Sandra Hull, you know, or, or Mr. Lawson. I, I can tell you right now, if I wished I knew what I knew now, because I would have sat down with them and all three of them just talked stories and had yep. it recorded somewhere to where, you know, you could just go listen to. Yep. Yep. And I, I have a goal right now and I'm trying to figure out how to get in contact with them. I want to get a episode with Mr. Hellums. I want to speak with Mr. Hellums and just let him talk and tell stories. (laughs) That would be an awesome one. I'm praying that I can make it happen. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, man, like I said, uh, I appreciate you coming on. It's been, it's been awesome. I really do appreciate it. Tell your wife, I said hello. And, And, uh, Hey, if anybody has any questions, I mean, because we get asked that sometimes, and some people think they're bothering us, asking us questions about how to show a dog or help with it. I mean, reach out to me or Angela on Facebook. We'll, we'll gladly help anyone. I mean, mm-hmm. because without the mentors that we had, I mean, I remember when I first started, um, you know, I was watching Cliff Parker, Tony Wall, Paul Caskey, I mean, you, I didn't just get to where I was. Right. Those gentlemen right there served me a lot of humble soup. You know, I thought I had a dog that could do it, and they whipped my tail quite a few times. <laughs> and, I mean, I'll never forget I, Virginia Carolina Classic. I carried a good-looking white dog up there, and I bought it from Will Moore out of uh, Newburn. Mm-hmm. He said, this dog can win the bench, a bench show. I went to Virginia Carolina Classic, and it wasn't no time. I mean, he they pointed at me. I thought I was going to the first. I looked up there on the bench, and it was Tony Wall, Cliff Parker, Paul Caskey, and one other. I can't remember who it was. Right. And I, I was fifth. <laughs> and I was like, they done skunk me. I mean, it, it took me forever. But, you know, it was watching, you know, guys that were phenomenal showmen to get me to where I am today. Right. So. And y'all, have, I mean, y'all, I've reached out to y'all before and y'all have been very helpful with questions that I've had. And I can't pre- I appreciate that, you know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, another thing about it, you know, you hear some people, oh, a parrot mouth is disqualification. There's only two disqualifications in the rule book. And that's a dog not having two testicles mm-hmm. and a bob tail. Right. I mean, you know, people don't read. They just go by what someone told them 10 years ago, and they believe that to be true. Right. And, I mean, I would encourage anyone to read the rule book from beginning to end, Masters, National, AFHA. And then if you have any questions, ask someone. Right. Because you never know what you'll learn. You know, I can sit here and tell you one thing. 
And if I'm off or if I'm giving you my interpretation and you take my interpretation and interpret it the way you want to, it's like the old telephone game. By the time it gets to the third or fourth person, hey, that parrot mouse automatic DQ. Right. And I mean, it's not. I mean, you know, people, oh, I can't show this dog because it's got a ripped ear. That That's a running injury. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable what people, you know. Yep. And we all got to learn somehow. Yep. So. Yep. Well, I mean, I'm, I've learned from the best, and that's my goal is to help people and, you know, see the next young Angela or the young Chris that goes, Hey, I'm going to beat you. Um, (laughs) That they ain't nothing more that tickles me. Um, is to see someone get that fire and get that first win and go on. Right. I mean, that's what it's about. Yep. Yep. That's a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Correct. A hundred percent. But well, like I said, man, I appreciate you coming on. It was awesome. And, uh, like he just said, if anybody needs to reach out, Chris and Angela Powell on Facebook, y'all can find them. And uh, and uh, like I said, uh, good luck in your next hunt, buddy. And uh, to everybody out there listening, I appreciate everybody. And like always, happy hunting. <laughs>